Good evening, members of the gallery, councillors and staff. We're going to begin the meeting. Nyama, Wanjari Wairangulin, Gunganinu Bik Wenorop Darabandari, Nyariana Nyanga Bik Ban Ba Nyagu, Gagukal Nangit Bambuth Yelingbu Ba Gamaji. I acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people on whose land Darabin Council stands. I recognise their ongoing connection to land, water and culture and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. It's good to see so many people here tonight for our meeting. We will proceed with the agenda as listed. Um, membership of this meeting is as listed in the agenda and we have apologies from Councillor Steph Amir. Um, Councillors, are there any disclosures of conflict of interest tonight? No, there are none. So that brings us to item four, confirmation of the minutes of the planning committee meeting. That's moved by Councillor Lena Messina and seconded by Councillor Julie Williams. All those in favour? That motion is carried. So that brings us to consideration of reports and the first item on the agenda is item 5.1, application for planning permit at 164 St George's Road, Northcote. I'll hand over to the officers to tell us about this application. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Rennie. Um, the site's occupied by a former warehouse building comprising a double-storey section to St George's Road and an original single-storey se section to the rear. Um, the building was converted to a dwelling circa 2016 via a building permit. Um, the rear of the building provides a floor area of approximately 470 square metres and it's used to store the owner's personal vehicle collection. The proposal at hand uh, involves an extension to the existing building. Um, the extension, extension comprises the addition of a third storey to the front to St George's Road and two additional storeys to the rear. Um, a total of three storeys is proposed across the majority of the site. Um, the extension provides for additional car parking at the first floor, as well as an entertaining and terrace area. The, up, the uppermost level provides new living areas, including three bedrooms, living areas and balconies. Um, a key feature of the design is a vehicle lift servicing all floors and actually allows for the display of a vehicle within the dwelling at the uppermost level. Um, the site's located within the mixed-use zone and it's covered by a design and development overlay, Schedule 16. The DDO sets out a non-discretionary height limit of five storeys, a four-storey street wall and a 45 degree rear setback. Um, the Darabin Planning Scheme actively encourages urban intensification along the St George's Road corridor. Um, the site has actually had a previous planning approval for a four-storey development with eight units and a 20-seat restaurant. Um, this obviously never went ahead. Uh, in, regards to the application, in regards to this application, the permit is only required because, uh, for buildings and works because the development exceeds the rear setback requirements as detailed in DDO 16. In terms of notice, uh, three, three, applica uh, three objections were received and the issues raised are summarised comprehensively and resolved in the report. Um, the key considerations in regards to the rear setback are that the proposal is not all new development, but an extension to the existing uh, building that's already constructed to the rear boundary. This existing uh, rear boundary wall already does not comply with the setback requirements of DDO 16. Um, the height of the development is three storeys and less than the five storeys anticipated for this precinct within St George's Road. Um, the rear form reasonably steps back from the existing sawtooth boundary wall to be retained and adequate distance to minimise the perceptions of bulk um, from the perspective of adjacent residential properties. Overshadowing and overlooking are considered in the report and are within acceptable limits. And the application has been assessed as supportable, subject to the included conditions. Thank you for that summary of the application. We have two people listed uh, to speak tonight, one applicant and one objector. Um, I'll invite the applicant, Stephen Koenig, to come up to the table. Welcome. Um, you have five minutes. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Councillors, uh, for the opportunity of addressing on behalf of uh, the owner and occupier of the property, uh, Mr Anthony Cascani. Uh, my name is Stephen Coney and I'm speaking on his behalf tonight. As described in the officer's report, 
A former factory occupies the land and was converted to a dwelling by Mr Cascone in 2016. He now intends to add to the existing structure by filling in the sawtooth walls of the existing factory to create a first floor level and add a second floor incorporating living areas and three bedrooms. And that's all outlined in the officer's report and the plans in front of you. Uh, Mr Cascone is an avid collector of exotic cars and a club member. He intends to keep his car collection within the home. You can see a lift to allow him to bring those cars from the ground level up to the, the first floor level. And then he and his wife will be living and the grandchildren uh, on, the, um, on the, third, the second floor. Um, the enlarged dwelling has been sited and designed to avoid any unacceptable off-site impacts on the amenity of surrounding residential properties. Um, in fact, the owners and occupiers of those properties which adjoin this site or are directly opposite have not lodged any objections. <coughs> if we look at the amenity aspects, um, views, outlook from the first and second floor storey habitable room windows and balconies will be effectively screened through the combination of setting back as well as um, screening. <coughs> With respect to overshadowing, there will be no overshadowing of any habitable room windows of neighbouring dwellings and there will be no significant increase in overshadowing of anybody's secluded private open space at ground level. In fact, the, even though it doesn't apply standard 8, um, 14 in relation to 75% of the secluded private open space getting five hours of sunlight, that is um, compliant. It's a three bedroom dwelling, so it requires the provision of two car parking spaces. Um, and as you can see from the ground level, there is ample space to accommodate at least two uh, cars at ground level. Um, and of course, also to accommodate any visitors uh, parking. Um, with respect to the overall height, with regard to that, um, the DDO 16, which applies to the property, encourages up to five storeys and a maximum height of 16 metres. As referred to in the officer report, what's proposed is a three-storey building, well below what is permissible. In fact, the permit for a four-storey building was granted in 2012 at the direction of VCAT for eight dwellings and a 20-seat cafe on this site. So in comparison, it, um, the additions to the existing building proposed by Mr Cascone will result in a reduced building of only three storeys and which will be used for a single dwelling. In summary, councillors, the proposal we believe is an appropriate enhancement of the existing residential use of the building and will not cause any unacceptable off-site impacts on the amenity of neighbouring residential properties. My client supports the officer's assessment of the planning merits and urges the committee to adopt the recommendation and resolve to grant a permit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Koenig. You may resume your seat. Um, I'll now invite the objector, Lisa Eglegs, oh, sorry, um, to address the council. Thank you. Thank you, too, um, for the opportunity to speak. And I do thank the um, applicant's representative for clearing up a few things. I guess one of the reasons we wanted to make sure we were here was that even though the development is on 164 St George's Road, um, the way that particular area is structured, our um, uh, single-fronted Edwardian house on Elm Street, um, where we eat, where our kitchen dining area is, we see the whole of the development. And our two main concerns were the overlooking, um, first and foremost, and, um, and the overshadowing, because we had a look, and um, after 3 o'clock, we're in, like almost 70% um, our little private courtyard area. And while I do appreciate that it was um, originally, uh, a permit was granted for something higher again, just because you're allowed to doesn't mean you have to do it. And if you actually have a look, it does stick out like a sore thumb compared to the neighbouring areas in terms of height, but it's allowed, so there we go, in terms of landscape and aesthetics. 
Um, so the overlooking, because judging by a few of the little diagrams, it didn't really give us much confidence because while you do speak of screens and it's not my area of expertise, so I'm not really sure what it is. I, you know, there was a, a reference um, on one of the recommendations, um, point 1D, window type and opening of mechanism on all elevation plans. The mechanism must not increase, increase overlooking of secluded private space, blah, blah. I don't know what mechanism that is. Um, but there's nothing worse than being um, looked at while you're in your own private area. Um, and so I think they're the two main things we were concerned about. We want the privacy in our own home. Um, as I said, it, it must seem odd to you because we're at Elm Street, there, St George's, but we directly look at each other. Um, and we just wanted that reassurance that there'll be absolutely no overlooking, not only into the courtyard, but our own private space, the kitchen and dining area. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's been fully addressed. Okay. So that's about it. So thank you. Thank you, Ms Iglesos. Um, thank you for addressing Council okay. tonight. Um, councillors, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Councillor Greco? Um, thank you, Mayor. Look, um, my question goes to, to the points that have been raised by the objector in relation to the overshadowing and overlooking. I was wondering if we can get some further explanation from our officers in relation to those particular uh, aspects and how they've been treated and what conditions have been placed in the um, permit um, request in order to overcome some of those issues. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Sure I'll thing. get you to respond. I've just put up the shadow diagrams that have been submitted with the application. Um, you can see the objector's property to the sort of southeast corner. And in the worst case scenario, at 1 p.m. Um, of, at 1 p.m. there's a tiny bit on the garage. And then later in the day, by the time it gets to 3 p.m., there is some additional shadow. It doesn't actually show the shadow from that garage, but. Um, the assessment in our report that that's within reasonable limits. For most of the day, it's un, unaffected. There would be some later in the day, yes. In terms of the overlooking, um, the plans do notate that there is, at the upper level, there's 1.7 metre high screens and there's a detail of that on the plans that sort of goes to the south, southern and eastern elevations um, from the upper level. Um, windows on the south elevation, I'll show you. So there's a screen that goes all the way along this side, and at the back, it's the same thing at the top level. At the lower level, this is behind the actual um, existing boundary wall. And then on the other side, these are highlight windows to the car parking area, and they've got a seal height of 1.7. So all the screening and overlooking is taken care of. In terms of the mechanisms for window openings, it's something we asked for to ensure that the sustainability of the building shows the right ventilation, um, and also to ensure that, you know, by showing those window openings, it can demonstrate that there's no further overlooking as part of the application. So that's sort of how that sits. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence, you have a question? Um, Mayor Rennie, it's been partially answered, but I'll just... Um, clarify that final point um, because I think that was what the resident was raising. So in terms of referring to mechanisms, you were talking about if there's an opening, it would open from the top, not from the bottom and those sort of things. Yeah, exactly. So it would show the actual way the window works, whether it's a awning or a, you know, however it works. Um, we ask for that and then we assess it, yeah, as part of the condition one stuff that comes in after this process. Yep. Great. Councillors, does anyone have a motion? Uh, Councillor Lawrence. Um, I'd move the uh, motion uh, as the officer recommendation for accepting the, rep the uh, permit. Thank you. So moved by Councillor Lawrence and seconded by Councillor Newton. Councillor Lawrence. Um, Mayor Rennie, I was a bit um, surprised this application was actually coming to us um, and um, in terms of seems to be complying with um, 
the council policies in relation to this area. This area is only a small amount of commercial properties along St George's Road that can um, be developed. It's, um, St George's Road is largely residential. Um, so in getting a lot of controls on, reservoir, on St George's Road along this area, um, council's committed to intensification on you know, the old um, factory across the road and those key sites, but we've sought controls um, in terms of setbacks and other things uh, along the, the border, and we have had the government approve that. So I think that this um, development of St George's Road is a careful one. Um, in this case, we're having someone not fully exploiting the height there, um, but I consider this alteration ensures a continued use at three storeys. Um, so I um, would be concerned if we'd actually breach our own intensification policies and refuse it, because you may actually dislodge the current owner who has a unique use for the site, and then we might actually be facing a four-storey, five-storey later. Mm. Um, so, and I'm satisfied that the officers have looked at the overlooking um, uh, for all <coughs> residents in this case, and we've got mechanisms there that can't be challenged at VCAT in terms of... Um, modifications to the application. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. So I do want to uh, acknowledge the objector and her concerns, um, but I think for me, on balance, what we have to remember, as Councillor Lawrence said, is that if it wasn't for this owner-occupier, it's possible that this site could go up to five storeys. So for me... Something that I really liked about this application is I don't think I've ever seen one quite like it. Um, I think it's unique and I think having the owner-occupier wanting to build a third storey and wanting to have a really quite interesting development um, is really quite pleasing, I think. Um, we've got a really decent-sized master bedroom um, and I think it looks very livable and I think there's been a lot of um, really careful intent put into this design. So for me, and particularly the fact that it's only three storeys when it could be up to five, um, means that it's supportable. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Newton. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. The Planning Committee has decided to grant the permit. This decision can be appealed to VCAT. Objectors have 21 days in which to lodge an appeal with VCAT. The applicant has 60 days. Notices detailing the decision tonight and how an appeal can be lodged will be sent to all objectors and the applicant next week. Thank you for that. We'll move now to item 5.2, application to amend a planning permit for 29 to 31 Station Street, Fairfield, and 22 Arthur Street, Fairfield. I'll ask the officers to summarise the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. This application relates to the family doctor group located at 29 to 31 Station Street, Fairfield. Um, the main element of this particular planning application concerns 22 Arthur Street. Uh, it's a property that adjoins the practice and the proposal is to amend the existing planning permit that was granted in 2015 to allow the development of 22 car parking spaces and uh, the development of a car park. Uh, the uh, main, the proposed car park is proposed to be accessed via um, Arthur Street and it will have uh, a fence and a gate uh, set back inside the property. Uh, this will facilitate uh, the proposed increase of the medical uh, centre from 12 practitioners up to 20. The uh, subject land, uh, so the Arthur Street properties are typical of the size of the properties in Arthur Street. It's zoned general residential. Uh, as part of the process, the application was advertised. It is the subject of 25 objections. Many of these raise grounds related to traffic, noise, neighbourhood character and the intrusion of a non-residential use. Uh, the intrusion of a non-residential use is an interesting one. It comes up quite a bit at VCAT. Um, and what VCAT regularly say is that uh, they point to the provisions of the general residential zone and there's something in the provisions of the general residential zone that point to an allowance of non-residential uses uh, that serve local community needs. 
and there are a number of decisions that refer uh, to not only medical centres but even health precincts uh, and support for those to be located in residential areas. And associated with that, so too uh, the traffic and associated parking impacts that those types of facilities provide. Uh, they're uh, often a concern raised by uh, residents, but they are generally, uh, these are state provisions. So the state provisions of the planning scheme uh, allow these non-residential uses to go into residential areas. Uh, so often when we're assessing these applications, the officers looking at and the assessment before you is about how this is accommodated, not whether it can or cannot occur. Uh, so it's really about what conditions are appropriate, what management controls are appropriate to allow that use uh, to integrate because we're dealing with a context that uh, encourages these non-residential uses in the general residential zone. Uh, so the officer's assessment looking at the conditions, uh, there's also one of the major attributes here is the house has been taken away and the car park is being put in its place. And the question is, what, what's the impact there on the neighbourhood character? Uh, the reference point which the report takes you through is the Darabin um, neighbourhood character study. It is quite dated, but it does look at this area and it's not one of those areas that's identified as having uh, significant intact attributes. Uh, it is located close to the Fairfield Centre. Um, there's not the, the strength in the controls that there might be in some other locations in Darabin. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, in the assessment, there's been some conditions applied, there's been some discussions in the preparation of the plans to ensure that the car park is set back to provide a landscape area and the fence area that's probably consistent with the uh, building set back in Arthur Street. And there's an opportunity to landscape and uh, soften the appearance of that car park when viewed from Arthur Street. So the assessment is that the application should be supported and that a notice of decision be issued. Thank you, Mr Rudd. I have two objectors listed to speak tonight, Mr Angus Quisp and Mr Peter Chilton. Can I just check um, that no one else is registered to speak? That's great. Um, I will invite Mr Angus Quisp to come up in the first instance. And Mr Quisp, welcome. You have two and a half minutes to address Council. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you to Council for the opportunity to speak, um, albeit briefly. Uh, thank you to Councillors also who have listened actively to the residents' concerns and spoken directly to us um, regarding these. Uh, I guess tonight is the time to put these concerns to the test with regard to accepting or rejecting uh, this planning permit amendment, um, and I do use that term loosely, as effectively, the way we see it, this is a separate application. Um, we've got a dozen or so residents from Arthur Street here this evening, and I, I think all 25 objectors would have been here should they have had the opportunity. But um, the way that we see this at the moment is effectively this is a, a rezoning of a parcel of residential land in a, in a residential street that has an established neighbourhood character as a commercial car park. Uh, the planning officer has addressed the 25 or so objectors' concerns with pure straight up the middle planning responses. We understand that the council are obliged to respond to the planning applications with regard to and due consideration to planning law. We're also aware the council is sensitive to any planning decision that may end up in VCAT. However, planning law does not provide an applicant an automatic right to a planning permit, particularly when there are good grounds to reject it. Um, council can disagree with its own planning officers. It can ask if there is a planning need for a particular permit. There is not. It can also ask questions as to the broader impact of a permit, regardless of the actual planning, dotted I's and crossed T's. The facts are that the Medical Centre was granted a permit just three years ago for the use of the Station Street property as a medical centre. At this point in time, a reduction in car parking was requested by the Medical Centre and granted by Council. Since that time, nothing within the Medical Centre practice has changed. 
there is no additional parking required as part of its current operation. Even if the proposed staff increases from 12 to 20 medical practitioners, we question why 22 spaces are being sought rather than eight, which is the staff change. The medical centre is a tenant only at the Station Street property. The medical centre also does not own 22 Arthur Street. Medical centre is Five seconds. To Medical Centre is aiming to attach a residential property to the Medical Centre with the aim of having what otherwise would be deemed a car park as part of the Medical Centre. I'm um, sorry, if I could just request, and I believe Peter only requires a minute. Um, I have, we have already spoken to the officer that we have total so, five minutes, and one person needs a little bit more. Okay, so if you're happy to give some of your time over, um, that's fine. I'll keep an eye on the time. You can keep going. Thank you. Um, if this was a separate application to simply turn a residentially zoned property into a car park, we believe this would be viewed very differently. In fact, the shared boundary between the medical centre and 22 Arthur Street is barely five metres in width. Um, as far as the residents in Arthur Street are concerned, it does not matter that this property is attached to the medical centre. From our perspective, it is simply a car park. That is all it is. We're asking also that Council consider um, currently there are no parking restrictions in Station Street. There are no parking restrictions in Arthur Street. There's a car park directly opposite the medical centre at the Grandview Hotel. For the majority of the medical centre operating hours, remains largely empty. There is car parking available in this area as it stands. Um, from a planning perspective, because of the way the applicant has applied for the amendment, it may well dot the I's, cross the T's with regard to the planning scheme. However, councillors, does it pass the common sense test? Council should, in our view, be looking at this application in a broader sense. Um, council has an obligation to manage not just planning impact of this proposal, but also um, manage broadly the growth of the council with regard to urban land, uh, assessment of compatibility of land usage. Uh, you need to ensure a healthy environment for so, the neighbourhood, uh, maintain... Mr Chilton will only have um, less than a minute left, so... I'm finishing up. OK. Um, council, we, we would like to ensure that with your overriding powers that sensible outcomes for the community are achieved. With your common sense hats firmly on, and if any of you were residents in Arthur Street, I guess the question we're asking is, does this proposal make sense? and we as residents believe that it does not. We request that you reject this proposal for the benefit of the street, but also the broader benefit of Darabin and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Quisp. Um, now, we have actually reached five minutes. In an attempt to, to be fair, I'll, I'll offer you another 30 seconds or so if there's something that you feel um, Mr Quisp wasn't able to cover. So um, welcome, Mr Chilton. Well, I suppose I can best sum it up by... Uh, you know, you pave paradise and put up a parking lot. This is not a, this is not a, a, uh, a medical centre that just happens to be bleeding into Arthur Street. The medical centre's on Station Street. There's a car park on Arthur Street. That's the impact we have. We have this really beautiful tree-lined street which is used by kids in the past and today. And now there's a house being pulled out and a car park to be put up. For whose benefit? for the sole benefit of the owners of the medical practice. It has no community benefit whatsoever. There's plenty of car parking around for them. This is just simply a car park in disguise as a medical centre put there for the benefit and amenities in this residential zone. There are no benefits, there are no amenities. Thank you. Thank you for coming in to address the planning committee tonight. Um, Councillors, are there questions? Uh, Councillor Lesseur. Uh, I just have a question um, through you to the officers regarding, I guess, the threshold between the need to apply for a new planning permit and the ability to amend another one. So obviously that came through strongly um, through the objectors' comments. Yeah, the um, need uh, for a new permit is usually defined, uh, Mayor Rennie, by um, what's termed as transformational. And uh, it's 
it's really quite extensive what um, permit applicants can now do with an existing permit in terms of um, uh, the degree of flexibility to make changes. So there certainly is, I can confirm, uh, it's quite reasonable to add in adjoining properties to a use that's already operating. Um, that's been well tested and clearly allowable. Uh, and even to, even in this case, uh, because the Station Street property is in a different zone to this one. Thank you, Mr Rudd. Councillors, are there further questions? Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor Rennie, uh, through you. So the objector talked about, one of the objectors talked about the Grand View and if it was possible to park there. Um, so I'm just curious about that. And do we know if there's an issue with parking now, like a staff parking on the street now? Do we have any idea about that? Thanks. Thank you. Mr Rudd. We understand that is uh, occurring, uh, but uh, I don't have you know, exact numbers or numerics on uh, that type of analysis. In terms of the Grand View, you can, under the planning scheme, uh, have an agreement with another property um, and use that as part of your planning permit to say, I have an agreement with this property less than 200 metres away uh, to park our vehicles there. Uh, they're generally very difficult to administer, particularly as either property changes hands, particularly if, say, the Grandview car park uh, in that instance had an agreement and then decided that they would sell to another owner who has different aspirations and needs. So it's not something we uh, actively encourage, but it is something that is available. Thank you, Mr Rudd. Further questions, councillors? Councillor Lawrence. Um, Mayor Rennie, I'd just throw you to the officers. Um, I'd like to get a bit of history on the um, planning overlays here. In particular, um, going back in time, did Council seek a residential growth zone for this site um, or was it ministerially applied? I just Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Mr uh, the, It's only the Station Street frontage was rezoned several years ago to a residential growth zone, which has a mandatory height limit of four storeys. So that came in in 2015. Mm. So to confirm, the Arthur Street site is general residential zoned? Uh, that's correct, Mayor Rennie, yes. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor McCarthy. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, the objectors have raised some issues, particularly the first objector, in relation to um, what is really going on here with this application. Um, the report also refers to that on pages um, 26 and 27. I'm just wondering if, as officers, you could, um, or through you, Chair, um, provide a bit more of an understanding for us about how the car parking use is or isn't protected in the future if this was to be approved, and um, whether there is uh, the scope in, in a future scenario for both properties to be adjoined as one multi-unit development, I suppose. So that's one of the proposals that's been put forward to me um, by objectors today. That, that is a, a, a potential future prospect of which this is a pathway towards that. Yeah. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie, it's always difficult to answer the hypotheticals because there are different controls that apply to the Station Street frontage. What I will point out, uh, if you're under a scenario where 22 Arthur Street becomes redeveloped, and uh, there is a reliance, you know, th if this is approved, there'll be a reliance on parking uh, on site. Uh, so to decouple that would be an issue that would have to be looked at and would require future parking analysis. Um, so there'd be a compliance issue if, if for sake, the, the permit was granted and the car park was sought to be decoupled for development. Now, if that site is developed, uh, different provisions apply. So uh, several years ago, the state government introduced the garden area requirements. Even though this site is a car park, it would still be obliged to satisfy the garden area requirements. And that uh, provides for a fairly... Uh, about 30% of the site has to be allocated uh, for garden area. That doesn't include driveways or paved areas. Uh, so the development is also limited to less than three storeys. So there's vastly different allowable um, 
development typologies on Station Street compared to Arthur Street. Uh, and again, the neighbourhood uh, character attributes are still applicable in the zone. They would probably uh, limit a development in the Arthur Street frontage to two storeys. Thank you, Mr Rudd. Councillor Lesserve. Uh, one of the objectors uh, made a comment that the uh, owners of the medical centre do not own the 22 Arthur Street site. And now this is, I guess, not related to planning, but I guess I'm interested in, do they have a long-term lease with the owners of 22 Arthur Street? And do we have any information about that arrangement? Uh, through you, Mayor Reddy, I, I don't have any information at hand. Um, it's a question I'd need to take on, mm. on notice. But generally the planning system allows for... Um, uh, it, it's, it's quite OK uh, for someone to make a planning permit application on land they don't own. And it's not really a matter that we turn our assessment to. Um, but obviously when someone gets a planning permit for land they don't own, they've got to get permission of some kind before they can proceed. But where, whether there's a commercial lease or arrangement there, our binding element is the planning permit attaches that um, activity or development uh, to the remaining site on Station Street. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Greco. Uh, yes, through you, Chair, uh, to the officers. Uh, this is a curious application in terms of um, where, how the land, the, the two pieces of land are positioned. So one is I wanted to get an idea from the diagram you, you, what the overlap between the two properties are in terms of metres. Um, I'm not sure if it's five or ten metres. And because the, the next question that coming from that is that in the report it's mentioned about the, the connection between the connection of uses between between the land. And I want to get some understanding of um, uh, whether there's any requirement on um, whether the land has to be adjacent or 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 with this very um, small connection between the two areas whether that's sufficient to um, ascribe to the, to, to the land, to, to provide that land as, as a car parking space for the use of the medical centre. So I suppose my question is, um, because they're so separated, can that connection be adequately uh, made? Mr. Uh, through you, Mayor Reddy, our um, assessment is that that connection's perfectly fine. Uh, the, it is proximate, it, it does offer convenience. Uh, and it's, it's not out of the ordinary to get uh, a planning application where the car park configuration, you know, is somewhat detached from the principal use. And I'd say this, you know, there's... You can see the width there. Each of those car parking bays are 2.6 metres each. Uh, so the uh, gap there is, is more than accessible for a pedestrian uh, convenient point. You can see very close in that dotted circle there's also a gate access shown. Just a supplementary question to that. Um, again, because it's, for me it's very peculiar, do we have any examples where we have a similar sort of setup where the, the connection between the two areas uh, is so, so minute? Oh, I'd say there's probably numerous examples, uh, Councillor Penny, when you look at many of the apartments that are being approved. Uh, they would have a, a separation much greater than this, uh, but it's vertical, where you might have a 12-storey building and you'll service by a basement car park. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, whilst I, I foreshadowed with councillors um, a refusal motion, I do want to ask the question um, in relation to the prospect, if this was approved, um, what, what would be the implications if the owner of 22 Arthur Street was then to seek um, development approval either of townhouses, apartments, units, um, in relation to that site on, in and of itself, um, how would that be considered given this proposal seems to join the two by virtue of this application? Yeah. Um, and does that, is that considered as a unique use separate to the current proposed park car park? Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie, it is, um, it, the, the proposal is to amend the principal permit, so it becomes part of the principal permit if approved. Uh, so if that site was to be separated, there would be required to be an amendment to the permit to decouple the car park use and to provide all necessary 
uh, parking analysis to justify a parking reduction. So it's amending the permit, it's removing the car park, it's also seeking a reduction, which is also another trigger in the planning scheme for a planning permit to reduce the parking that's made available to them, the principal use. And then separate to that again, there's a planning permit application for the development. So that would be a new application. It can't be an amendment. Thank you, Mr Rudd. Councillor McCarthy? Uh, uh, thank you. And thank you, Mr Rudd. Um, the, the result of, of that answer raises another question, which is um, under the, gen under the ges general residential zoning of 22 Arthur Street, um, the entitlement to apply for a, for a planning permit on that side is up to, as I understand it, three storeys. Um, whether that's a multi-unit development or townhouse development, could you just confirm what the development entitlements would be in that scenario? The, yeah, three of them are ready. The um, 22 Arthur Street, the general residential zone, does allow generally up to three storeys, but there is, in terms of height, scale and form, uh, you're informed by the neighbourhood character and uh, understanding that most of that street is single storey, it would be unlikely that we would bring an officer recommendation to support three storeys. So, as I said earlier, it's likely it would be two storeys. Okay. Thank you. Are there further questions or a motion to propose? Councillor McCarthy. I, I have a, a motion, um, Mayor, which I'll, uh, which I'll chair, I should say, in the Planning Committee, um, which I'll read for the benefit of councillors. Um, the motion is uh, that Council refuse the application. I think it should be actually the Planning Committee refuse the application um, with the grounds as follows. Uh, one, the use of the land at 22 Arthur Street would have a negative effect on the character of the area, contrary to the provisions of Clause 22.02, .02, Neighbourhood Character of the Darabin Planning Scheme. Two, the proposed use of the land at 22 Arthur Street would result in a loss of residential amenity by way of noise and disturbance. Three, use of the site in a, for a non-residential use is considered incompatible with the existing residential uses, contrary to the decision guidelines at clause 32.08-13 of the General Residential Zone Schedule 2. Four, the proposal is poorly conceived and not site responsive. And five, the development does not comply with the state planning policy framework, comma, local planning policy framework and the municipal strategic statement as contained in the Darabin planning scheme. Thank you for that motion, Councillor McCarthy. Um, Councillor Lawrence, did you indicate um, a desire to second that? So, that, um, Seconded by Councillor Lawrence. Um, Councillor McCarthy. Um, Thank you, Chair. I, and I thank both the uh, both the objectors, um, both of the objectors, and also our um, our officers for providing some responses and obviously the questions from councillors, which I thought were really informative. I have to say, in considering this, it alarmed me straight away, um, and I think that's usually a pretty good indicator of needing to delve a bit deeper into the application that we would see an application for a car park in what is currently a residential street. Um, the fact that Station Street is an adjoining street and is obviously um, undertakes a different zoning and obviously has a different level of activity um, is a consideration in this. However, um, we, need to, we need to be able to consider what this application actually is, um, whether or not it has merit, not only under the Darabin planning scheme and under the relevant clauses, and the officers have put forward a recommendation, um, which I respect their, their work, but I also think we need to ask a question from a broader strategic land use perspective, and hence the reference in the refusal to the bigger picture documents that we um, observe as council, which is the municipal strategic statement, um, and of course the state planning policy framework, which is that, in my view, this is not a desirable use for this site. Um, it is an interesting test of the merits of the strategic work that we as a council have done, um, plus also obviously the state policy settings. Um, I think it's obvious from the uh, positions that have been put forward by objectors that this is also not a preferred site and would seem to have a detrimental impact on the residential amenity. Um, that, is, that is an important consideration. It does not always meet the test um, under the planning system and so hence my view here is that the strongest reason for refusal are those clauses that I referred to in the motion 
that specifically refer to the strategic intent of the planning scheme and, uh, and the consistency with our positioning as a city, but also um, in our municipal statement in relation to land use. Um, I'm obviously very concerned about what this application is and what it could become in the future, um, and hence the, the point of my questions. However, that is not the primary consideration in our decision this evening. Our decision is about how does this stack up against the planning scheme, the municipal strategic statement, and, uh, and the merits of the arguments in favour and against. Um, so on that basis, I'm proposing this refusal. Um, I would also say that I think we need to have, uh, if this is a successful, a robust representation um, if this is appealed, because this is almost, uh, in my view, a, a bit of a test case of what this means to have a non-residential use in a street like this. It certainly doesn't seem like a contemporary use, and, uh, and, and it seems completely contradictory to the planning application that we received through this chamber um, just uh, three or four, well, five years ago, I believe. So I'll end it there. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to all who've contributed to this process. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lodge. Sorry, I'll ask um, that you refrain from applause. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie, um, thank you. Um, look, the issue about neighbourhood character in adjoining streets um, needs to be um, prosecuted with as much vigour as we can. Well, I understand that our neighbourhood character study is now becoming dated and attacked in VCAT, but in this street, um, which for outsiders um, may look like a semi-commercial zone sandwiched between a major arterial road and a railway line, is in fact got intact single dwelling, single storey 1920s Californian bungalows. And um, councillors probably won't um, be surprised by me raising this issue. We should be protecting this built heritage. I understand that's not included in the um, uh, refusal grounds because I believe we have a blind spot in our heritage study here. Um, but this, uh, these bungalows from the 1920s, which dominate Elphington and Thornbury, are rare, are unique, um, to us and Coburg, and should be protected. They're actually used for housing. This one's been extended. It's operating as housing. We're actually proposing to get rid of housing, so not meet our housing objectives, and I believe damage our built heritage in the area. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm just flagging that continues to be a problem because we do not have heritage protection of 1920 buildings throughout the precinct. I will note um, that the council just enacted a new heritage study for Thornbury West, or Thornbury, um, which will protect a large slab of it, but there's a lot of it in Elphington and Fairfield that's also Ten under seconds. threat. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillors, are there further speakers? Councillor Greco. Thank you, Chair. Look, I'll be speaking in support of the um, the motion to disallow this particular application. Um, look, I believe that the, the objectors hit it on the head at the outset by that throwaway line saying that this was a, a de facto rezoning because um, whilst the general residential zone allows for um, small-scale um, non-residential use, I think this really stretches the mark in, in, in relation to that. And if you look at the report carefully, that's one of, the, one of the most contentious issues there that where we have to strike a balance. I respect the officer's um, um, recommendation in terms of they, they've struck the balance in terms of allowing such an activity um, to, to fall within the general residential zone, but I believe that um, it's really not compatible with the general residential zone um, um, requirements. I also note that the conditions that the officers have tried to put in place, um, particularly conditions in relation to acoustic fencing and also the conditions in relation to landscaping, were an attempt to try and ameliorate some of the, um, um, some of the excesses in regards to this particular application. But again, I, I think that it crosses the line in regards to um, going beyond what is expected in a as part of the general residential um, zoning um, requirements. And the final point that, that I would make is that, and I think this was raised in a, in a number of questions, is that um, 
if we were to allow this application to go through, and particularly if VCAT was to allow this application to go through, if it gets to, to VCAT, is that um, we, uh, we don't have future control over that, vac that, that car parking area. Ten and that's a great concern to me. And then I think that at the council level, we should make a strong statement and um, not allow this particular application to go through. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour and against? That motion is carried. The Planning Committee has decided to refuse the permit. The decision can be appealed to VCAT. Objectors have 21 days in which to lodge an appeal with VCAT. The applicant has 60 days. Notices detailing the decision tonight and how an appeal can be lodged will be sent to all objectors and the applicant next week. Thank you. Um, you may leave quietly now if you don't wish to stay for the end of the meeting. Um, we will move now straight on to the next um, item, which is 5.3 in relation to 813 High Street Reservoir. We'll just give people 30 seconds to get out. Thank you. Over to you for a summary of this application. Thank you. Uh, this application seeks a planning permit for a multi-storey mixed-use development comprising the construction of a five-storey building with 11 dwellings and a shop. Uh, the site's located within, a, within the mixed-use zone and is covered by an environmental audit overlay. Uh, the site's located within Precinct 12 of the High Street Corridor Land Use and Urban Design Policy. Um, the site context is one of commercial activity to High Street and low-scale residential to the rear, including heritage overlay. Of the 11 dwellings, there's a mix of one, two and three bedroom units. Um, the application provides for 12 car parking spaces and these are provided through the use of car stackers with access from the rear laneway. Um, 20 secure bike parking spaces are provided for the 11 units. Notice of the application was given and 14 objections were received. Um, the issues are, are uh, summarised and comprehensively resolved in the report. Um, a key issue includes the consideration of impacts to the amenity of the dwelling to the west, or dwellings to the west. Uh, in this respect, the rear setback um, is considered appropriate, and it needs to be recognised that this um, this residential site, or this site neighbour, or the residential site at the rear neighbours commercial properties to High Street. And given the applicable planning policy framework, there is strong justification for high density development in this activity centre and strategic corridor location. Um, the rear setback proposed is considered acceptable as discussed in the report. Um, over, overshadowing and overlooking are consistent with, uh, a consist, are considered and are within reasonable limits um, subject to the relevant conditions. In terms of amenity, a Clause 58 assessment specifically relating to apartment developments is covered in the report and the development responds positively to this policy. Um, the amenity of the dwellings is considered acceptable. Um, the proposed development doesn't rely on light courts for light and ventilation to the main living rooms um, and these are all orientated to either the east or west. Uh, the ma materials proposed include predominantly brick and metal cladding. Whilst the form is simple, it's reasonably well balanced with solid and void elements and appropriate setbacks to the to High Street and to the rear. Um, materials are of a high quality and provide a contemporary visual appearance. Um, the application's been assessed as supportable, subject to the conditions included in the decision. Thanks. Thank you for that summary. Um, we have an applicant listed and three objectors, so I'll start by inviting the applicant, Mr Philip Wiggle, to come and address the council. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you, uh, councillors, for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Philip Rugg. I'm a town planning consultant with 20 years experience in public sector and private sector. Um, representing our client, Dr Anthony Barbieri, who is his first project. He's not an unusual developer. This is his first, first development proposal. proposal. He's owned the property for a number of years. We, we support the officer recommendation clearly. We also accept the conditions put forward by the officer in their recommendation. We see, in, in consideration of the objections that have been raised, we see that the, there are a number of sort of key issues before you. 
and they are the policy support for the proposed development, the height and bulk of the building and the associated amenity impacts. Uh, there's been concerns raised regarding the use of the, the rear laneway for access to the site and parking and traffic. Firstly, what we would say from a policy perspective, the site is located in an area that's identified in both safe planning policy and council's own policies as a centre on the corridor to encourage higher density development. The, the zone is mixed use and encourages the mixed use outcome which is proposed. The site is very well located in terms of public transport. It's within 400 metres of the Regent Station. You have the shops and services along High Street. You have bus and tram stops nearby. Connectivity to bicycle paths, including the Capital Trail and Preston Primary School, all within 400 metres of the site. So it's, it's one of those sites we say which is strong policy support for intensification. And what we would say also is that these areas are where the heavy lifting should be done in terms of achieving high densities, affordable housing. Keep it away from the residential hinterland areas where you have much greater amenity impacts. And we say this is an area specifically for that purpose. In terms of bulk and visual and setbacks, it is a five-storey building. However, the design has been very careful to treat the most sensitive interface, which is to, that, to our west and the adjoining property at number one, Wild Street. What is important to note, there is a three metre wide laneway which separates the site to the adjoining residential property. It's proposed to construct a, uh, a ground floor wall at setback 1.3 metres to the rear lane. The current height of the existing building on the site is actually higher than what's proposed at the first two levels of the proposal. Above that point, the setbacks increase to five metres for the second and third level, and then up to 11 and a half metres for the top two levels. And that's really designed to comply with standard B17, which is a very uh, stringent requirement for side and rear setbacks. And we'd say the proposal easily meets those standards. And as a result of that, there's less and reduced amenity impacts to our neighbouring property. In terms of overshadowing, there, because of the east-west orientation of the lot and because we have that laneway separation, overshadowing to the adjoining property is limited to the morning periods only. At 10am there is some additional shadow cast above the existing fence line. From 11 to 12 onwards there's no additional overshadowing to the adjoining residential property. It's limited to the commercial properties to our south. In terms of overlooking, we accept the officer's recommendation to provide more uh, specific detail in terms of screening to prevent overlooking to our neighbouring properties. So we believe that is adequately addressed. In terms of the right of way, we, we note that the right of way is in a mixed use zone itself. It's currently used by the, premise, the commercial premises and the residential properties for vehicle access and waste collection. Proposal for car parking. We, the, the planning scheme requires a total of 15 car parking spaces the proposal provides th uh, 12 spaces, so there is a reduction of three spaces. Two of those are for the shop use and one for the three bedroom apartment. And we know Council's traffic engineers raised no objection to the reduction in parking, also noting the proximity of the site to public transport opportunities. Uh, there's been some concerns raised regarding the use of stacker units. Stacker units are very commonly used these days in apartment buildings. It allows more space at ground level for retail and shop uses and other amenity areas, and we say they're very efficient these days and convenient to you for use. The other things we would note is, in terms of the, the building itself, it is proposed to be a high quality building. It's not a cheap construction. It's use of face brickwork to the street, so... 10 seconds. Thank you. High Street's a three-storey street wall with then recessed upper levels. So again, we say there's very strong support for this proposal and we'd ask a permit issue. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the planning committee tonight. I'm now invite um, the objectors. So I have three objectors. There are five minutes between you, but for the sake of making that a little easier, I might give you each two minutes. Um, can I just check that you are all here? Um, so Mr. Chris Wellsby, Nanette Aiken, and was Chris here? So, yep, Chris, Nanette, and Tony Delala. Great. So you each have two minutes. Um, I'll start with Mr Chris Wellsby. I was wondering if I might 
um, request three minutes because I think the other objective will, has only limited. Um, uh, so, Mr. Delala, you're happy to have one minute? Okay, so we'll give Mr. Wellsby three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this application is for a proposed inappropriate overdevelopment that negatively impacts upon its neighbours and surroundings for the following reasons. Visual bulk. When viewed from properties and the streetscape to the west and north, the proposed five-storey building has the visual bulk of a six-storey building because of the downward slope of the site from east to west. The excessive height of the ground floor at the rear of the, and the mezzanine levels, level forms a domineering presence over nearby surroundings and the residents at number one Wild Street in particular. The bulk of the building will block light into habitable room windows, uh, rooms and private open spaces, as well as any views of the skyline to the east. The property directly to the west is at number one Wild Street, and it is a low-lying building dating from 1886 and is heritage listed. The proposed five-storey building will have a significant negative bulk impact on this heritage building. Number two, traffic issues. The sole vehicle entry to the, propose, the proposal is via a three metre wide unsurfaced laneway that does not allow vehicles to pass each other. This is in contradiction of Darabin Council's requirements of a six metre minimum laneway width for such proposals. The laneway is already at maximum acceptable levels of usage serving residents of one of Wild Street, Henry Street and the commercial businesses in High Street. Traffic in the laneway passes very close to bedroom windows, uh, particularly number one Wild Street and number two Henry Street. The proposal has all waste removal carried out via the laneway, requiring its use by large noisy vehicles that will need to be stationary over extended periods of time. Parking. Parking for residents of Wild Street and Henry Street is already difficult. The proposal's uh, shortfall in parking provisions and the inconvenient use of parking stackers will lead to new residents to use side streets. <coughs> Serious negative impacts from noise. Cars entering and exiting via the laneway will create noise disturbances to existing habitable, habitable room, rooms and bedrooms at all times of the day and night. The noise disturbance from parking stackers and the air conditioning plant located on the ground floor at the rear will be exacerbated by the design of perforated garage doors that, will, that are required for ventilation. Large waste removal vehicles in the laneway will also have a negative noise impact. Ten seconds. Uh, balconies designed to the rear provide the only open space for five units and will be in constant use. Living spaces of these units open out to the balcony. Significant internal and external noise will emanate from the That's area. time. OK, mm -hmm. you may keep going. Uh, existing residences will be subjected to noise from five overlooking residences in a very tight, domineering space. Loss of enjoyment and privacy in existing private open space will still occur even if further screening were to be provided. The proposal is a gross overdevelopment of a small site with concerning negative impacts upon its surroundings. Its scale does not sit well within its neighbourhood context. It cannot provide adequate parking. It cannot provide delivery and service space for the shop and the apartments. It cannot provide appropriate waste collection of bin or bin storage. Ten seconds. It necessitates an unreasonable excess in the capacity of the laneway. To, to, in conclusion, by refusing this application and recommending a new proposal with a more modest design, Darabin Council would, would still satisfy its aim of higher density... That's growth, time. ...still Thank allow you. the developer to make a profit while still protecting the current living amenity and preferred character. That's time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'll now invite Ms Nanette Aitken to come down and address Council. My, I actually live in Henry Street. I use that alleyway. My concern is I come up to a T intersection. 
So there's an alleyway which is where the development is going to be. I come up to that alleyway and I've, it's a T intersection. I have no visual of anybody coming down on my left. There is, the fence line is square, obviously, and that's my concern because there are uh, currently uh, four car drivers and the majority of us go to the right up to that T intersection. Some of us come down wild, from Wild Street along the alleyway into Henry Streets, um, into our alleyway. So my, my only objection and cons major concern is the safety of that intersection. That's my concern. Because I have had that intersection and come up with someone coming down there quite quickly. Mm. And if I hadn't have looked, it could have been quite drastic. That's all my concern. Thank you. Thank you for presenting to Council tonight. Councillors, are there any questions? Councillor McCarthy. I might just take the, um, the, the second objector's um, question there about the matter of the T intersection and if officers could advise if there have been any conditions inserted to deal with any um, potential safety risks regarding visibility. There hasn't, there's no additional um, conditions regarding safety. I mean, it's been, laneways are often used for servicing for all of those um, properties along High Street as well as the residential properties. Um, it's not heavily trafficked um, from my site inspections that I've done. Um, at the moment, the site's used as an auto mechanic, I think, which would likely have a lot of vehicles coming in and out. Um, in terms of a residential use, I'd be suggesting that it's probably less um, intense than some of the commercial uses using the laneway. But in terms of the laneway, I mean, the title of this piece of land has a right to use it. It can be used for servicing and access. I don't think having 11 units of various sizes would be overloading or resulting in any unreasonable um, traffic safety issues in regards to the laneway that's there. Um, the only conditions that are on there is there's a section that's unpaved. Um, council's requiring that that gets paved to council requirement. And that's the northern section of the laneway. Thank you for that response. Uh, Councillor Williams. I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one was in reference to are there any conditions regarding the air conditioner to actually be uh, a part of the car parking area? Or air conditioning? The air conditioning, yeah, due to noise levels. There's the a, first um, objector made, made a comment that it was... One of the conditions is asking for an acoustic assessment and this needs to include um, external and internal plant. Um, so that would be to do with you know, noise to bedrooms and so forth. In terms of emissions, the acoustic assessment would need to deal with things like the car stackers and all that kind of stuff. In terms of air conditions, I think that's on the roof of the development. So it's unlikely to be a major noise um, source for residential properties to the rear. Okay. Thank you. Do you have another question, Councillor Williams? Um, in reference to the concern that the ejector brought up regarding um, waste management, how will that be handled? Yeah, waste management for this one, there's a condition requiring a waste management plan um, and that's to be collected by a private contractor, it's not council, because it needs to be collected from the rear laneway. From via the laneway, which is three yep. metres wide? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Are there further questions? Councillor Messina. Through you, Mayor Rennie, I'd like to ask the question. The first objector noted that the laneway was less than the minimum width. Could you give me some um, um, clarification regarding what the minimum width is and if this laneway complies um, with the objector's um, notifications? Yeah, I think the question was it was less than the minimum width for two-way vehicles to pass, but this one's a normal three-metre laneway. It's only, it will only allow one-way traffic, that's right. Supplementary question. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the particular plans and we're looking at uh, 829 to 753. I also note that um, on the corner of Henry Street and High Street, there's also a planning application that was approved last October at 793 for three storeys. Are there any other planning application along High Street there that is um, also uh, equivalent to this particular property? In other words, there's precedence been set that this would actually be approved by VCAT. Could you please clarify that for me? I don't know that there's any other developments along this section 
of High Street? I don't think there is. Uh, there is at 793. Oh, sorry. I've just been told there's a Sorry, I'll just... Um, Mr Rudd, are you able to ask, answer that? Yeah. Uh, Mayor Rennie, there's a site uh, about 100 metres to the north opposite that's currently under development. It gets to four storeys. Thank you. And sorry, if, uh, that hasn't answered 793. So could you tell me what's, how many storeys 793 was approved for last October? Yes, that was uh, three storeys, Mayor Rennie. Thank you. Councillor Williams. I'd like to put in uh, an alternative motion. Okay, I'll just check that there's no other questions. Uh, Councillor Lawrence has a question, so we'll answer that, Councillor Williams, and then we'll come back to you. Um, just, uh, Mayor Rennie, through you to the officers. Um, objector raised the issue of the visual bulk uh, being greater impact because of a downward slope. Yeah, the hinterland. Um, could I just get some policy response from the officers about what our strategic policies in this section of High Street, if they respond to that issue? So, I mean, you can see on the side elevation, yeah, there's definitely a slope going back to, um, you know, back to the west of the site. Sorry. Um, but in terms of the setbacks, um, our assessment is that it, it meets, um, you know, B17, which is actually used, you know, in even, you know, general residential zones. Um, so from the laneway, it meets the rear setback requirement of something in a residential zone. Um, and this is a commercial zone where there's specific policy um, seeking for, for greater building heights and densities. So I think in terms of the bulk, I think it meets what's required in terms of our policy. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? No, there are none. So Councillor Williams, you have a motion? That council refuses the application with the grounds as follows. One, the scale, setbacks and visual bulk impacts to High Street and to the rear of the site is contrary to High Street corridor land use and urban design policy and clauses 15.01 urban design principles. 22.06 multi-residential and mixed use development and clause 58 of the Darabin planning scheme to the to of the landscape and the low scale residential properties of the rear. Two, the number of dwellings provided a poor level of internal amenity as a result of their layout and design, room sizes and reliance to light courts, contrary to clauses 15.01 urban environment. 21.03-2 housing development and 22.06 multi-residential and, multi and mixed-use development and cause 58 of the Darabin planning scheme. Three, the provision of the mechanical stackers and turnable required for car parking will not provide contrary accessible to car parking for future residents. Four, inadequate car parking provision has been provided for the proposal. Five, the proposal is an overdevelopment of the site. It is poorly conceived and not site responsive. Six, the development does not comply with the state planning policy framework, local planning policy framework and the municipal strategy statement as contained in the Darabin planning scheme. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Williams. Um, and thank you for all that have come here this evening regarding uh, 813 High Street. We know there's been a lot of development happening, particularly in High Street, but in this part of High Street, we have not seen a development of this scale or size. I am concerned regarding the hinterland and the scale of what is being proposed here tonight. I'm very concerned about the car parking in the side streets, where it's very minimal amount. I'm also uh, extremely concerned the safety of the, the visual pers uh, perspective on um, coming out of the laneway and that visual, um, uh, what am I trying to say, the, what do you call it? peripheral vision is that you can't see, it's everything's like a tunnel vision. I'm also quite concerned when people are using the laneway, you will have this Mexican standoff and 
that one person has to reverse out, which is actually going to be quite dangerous. So there's quite a number of, of things that I... Uh, and of course, there's all the air conditioning. I'm also concerned on a hot night that if they have the air conditioning all going, you've got the the um, house that has the heritage protection uh, doesn't look like it's updated without any air conditioning. So therefore, it'll probably have its windows open all night on a hot night, and uh, having air conditioning going all night long uh, with quite a few properties would be um, definitely a, a noisy shoot for those people trying to sleep. Um, obviously, I've mentioned the other uh, impacts of, that I've read out, and I don't have anything else further to say. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, uh, Mayor Rennie. Um, I think um, obviously the council has got policy supporting intensification of residential development along this um, path, as been mentioned, um, but that. Um, um, policy position, of course, has a range of um, setbacks and um, safeguards put in place because we are developing, as has been pointed out, right next to an 1880 heritage listed house. Um, and so um, that means that um, extra care needs to be taken in regard to the rear setbacks because they are putting up with the noise and the transition in this process. Now, this area we have seen has not attracted residential development at this point. And at this point, I think we should be trying to um, finesse applications so they actually respect, fully respect the rear setbacks and the char neighbourhood character of the streets. And also these issues of safety, because um, uh, we, we actually want to develop housing here that is successful and is accepted by the community. The large number of objections here show that it isn't accepted by the community at this point. And I would note that the objectors said that they would be welcoming a more modest development on the site. And I think that's somewhere where we, you know, should be going. But at this point, um, we shouldn't just be, uh, you know, going through a, a box ticking exercise on our planning overlay, our development design overlay, but actually try and exercise the intent of it. And the intent is to make sure that development on the high street respects heritage buildings and residential buildings behind it. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour and against? Um, that is four votes all. I will exercise my vote in favour. That means that the planning committee has decided to refuse the permit. This decision can be appealed to VCAT. Objectors have 21 days in which to lodge an appeal with VCAT. The applicant has 60 days. Notices detailing the decision tonight and how an appeal can be lodged will be sent to all objectors and the applicant next week. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the planning applications before us tonight. We therefore move to other business, 6.1, general planning information. That's moved by Councillor Lesurf and seconded by Councillor Greco. All those in favour? That is passed. Um, item seven, consideration of reports considered confidential. There are none. Um, that brings us to the close of meeting. Thank you to all members of the gallery for coming tonight.